Hello and welcome back to another video with the Yamaha YZF R125. Now, I've been doing a lot of things off camera, I'm very much behind schedule. Um, by rights this should be a painting video, but I've actually wanted to fast forward the build a little bit. So I'll put in a little bit of the painting just for you to catch up, but let's give you a quick run around of where we're at already. As you can see, we've got the forks painted and back on, so they're looking good. So they're all ready to go. We've painted the handlebars as well and got these all remounted. I do have some new uh, brake and clutch levers come in, so we'll add them on later. So that's in. Uh, the engine cover is stripped. That still needs sanding and painting. Uh, we've painted the mudguard holder as well. And the rear swing arm has also been painted and is back on. So we're all ready to go. Off camera, we've done some painting. So we've stripped down the forks. We're giving them a respray and now we're going to rebuild them. So, first thing we need to do, putting the forks back together is make sure everything goes in the right order. So the first thing that goes on is the washer. And then we can add a bit of red grease onto the oil seals. And then just slot them into place. Bash it down. I like to just use a bit of wood and a mallet, just to make sure it's fit snug and tight. Then we can apply a bit of fork oil to the fork tubes. It just helps them slot in a bit easier without getting scratched. some Loctite to the bottom bolt and we can screw that in. Next up to the dust cover. Again, we can just apply a bit of red grease and it just helps it slide down and hold into place and make sure no dust gets past the seals. Once that's done, the fork's essentially rebuilt from the outside and we can start looking at the inside. For this, we're going to use special fork oil. The manual states how much to use, I think it's about a litre. We just need to pump the fork five to ten times just to make sure the oil is properly distributed throughout the whole system. And then the manual specifies about 15.2 centimetres is the gap we should have from the top so we can make sure we've got enough oil in and if it's just slightly off we can add a bit more just to top it up to make sure we're hitting the quoted amounts. And then we can put the spring in, put the washer on top of the spring, then the spacer and then the top to hold it all into place. Well what was that? Now, getting the tops on is about as fiddly as it is getting them off. So what we need to do is find a way to just push it down onto the spring and then we can put a retaining clip over the top. It's important at this stage to keep the fork upright because we don't want to spill any oil. I also measure how far the fork protrudes above the handlebars to make sure it's equal on both sides because we want to make sure the wheels are balanced properly. It's challenging to do on your own. I actually find it easier to put the fork back into the bike and hold it tight. Um, and then the best way I find is just to push it down with a ratchet screwdriver with no end in, so it's not scratching the top of it with a, a screwdriver end. But I can push it down and then move the retaining clip into place and make sure it's clipped in properly. Lastly, we just screw the handlebars back into place and we're ready to reconstruct them. Next up is stripping the paint off the engine covers, so that's leaving them with paint stripper on, and then we can sand it down with 120 grit, 220 grit, 320 grit, and ultimately 400 grit that we can go and paint. Obviously, it's important to take time out for the family when they come demanding. But please don't judge me on my drawing abilities. Yeah. 
Using the sanding attachment on a multi-tool can be really effective, especially when you need to get into all the nooks and crannies and difficult areas to get to. After sanding with 320 grit, I give it a good degrease to make sure everything's nice and clean, and then I wet sand it with 400 grit. Wet sanding is generally preferred because it's less abrasive and gives a better finish. Now we've got some nice smooth surfaces, we can go on to spray paint it. We use this VHT paint, or very high temperature paint, which is good for engine blocks, and we want to spray light coats. So nice and light, get into the nuts and crannies, but we want about three, four, five coats of it, just to make sure we get full coverage. If you apply too much in one coat, then it starts to bubble and run, we don't want that. After each coat, we leave for about half an hour to touch dry, so it should be nice and tacky. And then at the end, we can do three or four coats of a clear lacquer, just to make sure it's nice and protected. After this, I left it for about 48 hours to make sure it's fully dry. I mean, you can leave it up to seven days if you want to make sure it's totally dry, or you can even bake it in an oven at 93 degrees C for about half an hour. Once that's all complete, we can put the stator back in and get ready to mount it back on the bike. Don't worry, we are going to replace these caps with some nicer ones in the future. Now I've got the painted engine covers back on, I think they look pretty good. It's time to start her up and make sure she still works. I've reattached the exhaust, uh, so that's back on, and let's give it a little go, shall we? She's idling nicely, give it a bit of throttle. It is, she is warmed up, so I can give it a bit of throttle. sounded so much better than it was before. I'm really happy about that. Okay, the next job we've got going on is the rear sprocket. Got a nice shiny new one. But it doesn't fit. So what's happened is the previous owner has obviously replaced the wrist rocket with a 45 tooth one and we actually want a 48 tooth one. Unfortunately this also means that the holding bracket doesn't fit. So I've had to go and buy a whole new wrist rocket and bracket and I can just remove the new sprocket onto the new bracket. These bolts are really stiff, this is where I really need to get a vise to hold it down in place. So we'll give it a really good clean up. So a good coating with degreaser and then some warm soapy water just to make it a little spick and spam. I want to make sure it's bone dry before we put it back together. We've got some bearings in here so we don't want them retaining water. I don't always show it, but it's important to refer to the service manual to make sure that all bolts you put on are torqued to the right spec.
Well, I think that's time to end the video. Thank you very much if you've got this far, but let's do a quick review of what we have done. We've managed to repaint the forks and get them rebuilt so they're nicely sealed and looking good. We've repainted the handlebars so they're looking nice. We need to obviously tidy up the brake fluids and a few more bits around here, but um, they're looking much better. The engine, as we know, is running, so we managed to get some nice painted engine covers on there so they're looking much better. I'll just show you the other side, so that's looking good. We also managed to paint the swing arm, so again, this is looking much nicer than it was before. It's getting a bit dusty now because it's been sitting there. The swing arm's looking really good. We painted the license plate holder, so that was taken off, resprayed, and now is back on. So we've also put a new rear sprocket on, so that's ready to go back on the wheels. And as we know, the bike's now running. Um, or not. Okay, we'll figure that one out. So we've made lots of progress, we're getting there. It's all coming together quite nicely. Now we've got a few jobs left to do before it is finished and let me just run through what's next on the plan. The wheels most certainly need cleaning up. Um, I'm gonna have to try and strip these down and uh, powder coat them. So they need a full refurb. And I need to put the cooling system back together. The whole brake system needs sorting out. I've got some new um, brake handles and clutch um, handles, but the, all the brake fluids and brake lines need sorting out. So the brakes will probably be the last thing I'll do. I need to build a new fuel line as well, because this is um, for a Gen 2 engine on a Gen 1 bike. So next time I'm gonna to have to build a new fuel line so we can go around the other side and clip into the correct place. And after that, we might really be getting to the point of putting the fairings on. We might be able to take this bike for the first ride in six months that I've owned it. So thank you for joining me. If you do like the content, please do like and subscribe. It really does help me out. I'd love to get to a thousand subscribers as soon as I can. That would be a really good milestone for me. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video, which I'm gonna try and get out in two weeks time. Thank you very much and goodbye.